On August the 26th, 1883, the tiny volcanic island of Krakatoa erupted, creating one of the worst natural disasters in recorded history. In less than 48 hours, it destroyed hundreds of towns and villages and left more than 36,000 people dead. Those that survived the eruption left diaries, eyewitness accounts, and interviews. They were collected by the geologist Roger Verbeek, one of the few scientists to have witnessed the eruption. This film is based on those accounts. I lived. Tens of thousands didn't. Some of them were my friends. I have spent the last two years of my life trying to piece together the terrible events of August 1883. We were living in the most volcanic region on the planet. Indonesia. There are more than a hundred active volcanoes here. Krakatoa is just one of them. The volcanic island of Krakatoa sits in the middle of the Sunda Straits, 30 miles from the mainland. For centuries the people here have lived within sight of the volcano. We thought it posed no threat. I could have saved these people they witnessed the last days when the world changed forever. Uh, contracts have been issued for the pepper and the customary uh, two and a half percent, which brings us higher yields than Mr. Debris had initially. Money's left in the, uh, the reserve account. Nothing, Tuan. And we still owe 75 guilders interest Crazy. on last Good night. Hello. If we don't get the commission on those coolies. The horses are out of control. I'll see to it. Well, it's fine, I'll see to it. Willem, have you thought about it? Thought about what? Please. Joanna, I'm sorry, but I can't leave Katimbang. The harvest to arrange, the market opening on Sunday, it's impossible. You know, maybe in a couple of weeks when things... What about the tremors? They're getting worse. In your imagination. It's been rumbling away for months. Please, Joanna, you're going to worry yourself sick about this. I'm sorry, I... Anyway, go where? Anywhere. Batavia, the hill farmer? 
got it, Lou. I'm sorry. See to the horses. The Bearings. Willem was controller of Katenbang, a Dutch outpost. He struggled on his meagre government salary. His wife Johanna was 26 years old and a mother of three. We met several times that summer and never saw eye to eye. I should have listened to her. In May 1883, I visited the Schuert family. Having heard reports of increased volcanic activity, I wanted to see this for myself. The Schuerts, a Dutch family, lived and worked on the Fourth Point Lighthouse, 30 miles to the east of the island of Krakatoa. Bravo! Isn't she magnificent? Is it dangerous? Of course it's dangerous if you're sitting on top of it. But we're perfectly safe here. There's 30 miles of sea between us. It's the best seats in the house. Enjoy the show. This is the island of Krakatoa, with its three peaks. And where did you land? About here. Weren't you scared? Scared? <laughs> no. I was too busy collecting samples and getting scratched to shreds in the jungle. What makes it explode? Erupt, I mean. Do you still have that piece of pumice you showed me? Yes. We have to live here. Oh, it's just Roger. Please. No, it's not him. It's just... The answer to your question lies in the bubbles. You see them? I'm worried. It's like this beer here. It's full of bubbles. You shake the beer, and the pressure builds up inside. The bubbles need to escape, but they can't until... Oh. <laughs> Joseph, this past your bedtime. Say goodnight to Mr. Verbeek. Good night, Joseph. I've enjoyed our conversation very much. You can keep it. Thank you. Two scientists sharing their knowledge. Come on, Yusuf. Wait. Why did you say you found this? I found it on the beach. Why? The pumice Joseph gave me held the secret of Krakatoa, a sign of what was happening deep inside the volcano. But at that time, I had no idea what it meant. On the 20th of May, Krakatoa began for the first time to emit vast quantities of smoke. It should have been a warning to us, but for some, this was just a chance to make money. Captain? Captain! You, salute your commanding officer. <laughs> J. H. Lindemann captain of the Governor General Loudon. Since the death of his wife and only child two years earlier, he'd been reduced to ferrying passengers around the local area. Listen to this. Join the excursion of a lifetime. Take a boat trip to the furnace of the gods, Krakatoa, and walk on a live volcano, one of the greatest natural wonders of the world. My hotel guest, your ship. The Loudon is not a pleasure steamer. Furnace of the gods is built. Come on, Linderman. We'll make a killing be like the old days. Well, then it seems I wasted my time. You 
Enjoy the cigar. Garrett, morning tides at 6 a.m. Tell your guests to be on time. <laughs> Kamu berdua, ha? sayang. Atakah harus aku memanggil kamu tuan? Hmm? Miri kekalahan seperti orang Belanda. Takaya, Willem Bering's clerk, was one of those thousands of Javanese recruited by the Dutch to run the colony. But his loyalty to the Dutch Empire left him isolated. Bangga papila uniform sikulu itu sampai. Aku terpaksa menghalang. Mereka dari tatang ke kawasan, pendiaman, karena mereka terluing untuk menuju uniform. Bawa anak-anak bulan. Apa yang sedang balaku? Bawa mereka pulang cepat. Aku tidak akan lama. Tanam lada putih mereka. Mereka mencukai pendapatan kita. Inilah cara-cara pembuli dan penyangak. Inilah masa untuk kita sadar. Lalu itu. On the 27th of May, 1883, the steamship Loudon took 86 paying passengers on a day trip to Krakatoa. Look at them. Fools. They're paying fools, Lindemann. 25 guilders ahead. Your good health, Captain. Keep it at leeward, Mr. Janssen. Aye, aye, sir. I don't like the look of that smoke. What smoke? Lindemann, I smoke. It doesn't make me dangerous. You just can your money. Leave the ship to me. How far to wait from Zor? Three miles, sir. Quick as you can. Hey, 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 hey! I didn't know then what the volcano was telling me. These blasts were a sign. Deep below the earth, magma was clearing a path to the surface. It was only a matter of time before it escaped. Sound the horn, Mr. Janssen, we're leaving! But what about the guests? The guests paid in advance, I hope. Out of stand, Mr. Janssen! But you... You can't just leave them! Can't we? They've got half an hour, no more! Be careful with the satchel! Sherman! 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 Oh, Heaven's sake, Richard, what is it? Only a rumor up here. Sorry. A uh, view of what, damn it? Of that. Krakatoa's 100 miles, give or take. 5,280 feet. On the two. Divide right into uh, 532,000. That makes it nearly five miles high. Well, precisely. I know it's here somewhere. What it? What is it? A clue, I think. You see? This pumice is the same, from Tambora. But Tambora was a catastrophic event. A biblical. The, the crater's four miles across. I've seen it myself. Krakatoa's just a couple of vents. You mean Krakatoa will be the size of Tambora? I don't know what it means. I just don't know. 
Throughout May and into June, the three craters of Krakatoa continued to emit jets of steam. The gases caused strange blue and green colorations to the sun. They were considered harmless by the inhabitants, the volcano being some 30 miles from the coast. Life continued as normal. Joanna Bering was later interviewed by the Dutch authorities. It seemed the tremors were getting worse every day. But my husband Willem wouldn't listen. He was becoming increasingly preoccupied with his business affairs. Bersama anak kamu. Yang kecil sedang bersarapan pagi. Saya mau telur tetapi. Ayam tidak bertelur, Nyonya. Apa maksud kamu? Apakah jadi dengan mereka? Tidak ada apa-apa, Nyonya. Uh, there is nothing wrong. Uh, things are being uh, confused, out of balance. The animals know. They're leaving. As controller of the district, Willem Bering was responsible for the safety and well-being of all the people. He was kept fully informed about the developments on Krakatoa, yet did nothing. It seems he was preoccupied by other matters. License to one. I thought the contracts were. Contracts are in order, Janice. Just... My man couldn't get the coolies for the pepper harvest, that's all. So the money? I need more time. I had your word. The word of a Dutchman. Just. Just give me three weeks until the harvest. I'm a businessman, Mr. Bejerik. I have a license and obligations. Perhaps your colleague in Batavia. Would be interested to know how much you owe me. How dare you. under the mountain. Now I wake and they must learn what it is to earn the wrath of the spirit of the mountain. <laughs> Asked whether she'll erupt? No. She'll kick off for a few days and then go back to sleep. Well, I think you're wrong. Why? Have you noticed the animals? The 
animals. They're behaving very strangely. The monkeys and the birds won't settle in the trees. The, the hens won't lay. Well, wouldn't that affect your opinion? No. Well, I think it should. The natives have long believed the mountain to be very dangerous. I hardly think that native superstition qualifies... Maybe it isn't superstition. Maybe they understand the mountain better than you do. I'm sorry, it just seems to me that you're ignoring the... Shame on you. A scientist. <coughs> I realized far too late that I should have listened to her. Stuck by nightfall. I'm leaving with the tide. Aye, aye, sir. At 10 a.m. that Sunday, Captain Lindemann docked at Anya to pick up a consignment of Chinese workers, or coolies, as we call them. Their destination was Tilok Batong to the north. It was a journey they'd never complete. All right, move it up down here. And let's stop getting so down, down that way. Come on. Come on. Captain Lindemann, a word if you please. Bridge is yours, sir. What is the meaning of loading the ship with coolies? They're for control of bearing. I don't care if they're for the King of Holland. They stink. Captain Lindemann, mm -hmm. the coolies. They bother you. They stink. You ever thought what we smell like to them, huh? Mm, maybe they're right. Right about what? Corpses. They think we smell like the dead. Good day, gentlemen. This is unacceptable. The northerly course that Lindemann steered would take him closer to the volcano than anyone else that day. Need to change course, Mr. Jensen. Aye, sir. Change course. Take a bearing from Palau Son Yang. Set a course for Lampong Bay. 191 degrees. Place a BC out on the port side and into the bay from here. Jensen! Aye, sir. Steering course 191 degrees.
What are you doing? I'm measuring the height of the ash cloud. It's basic mathematics. But what is it that you do? I try to understand the world, how it works. Do you understand the volcano? It's a complex geological process. It was formed millions of years ago, before man. My people, we are not afraid of the volcano. I didn't want to go to the festival. Willem tried to calm me. The market opening would be a joyous occasion. I was convinced that something dreadful was going to happen. Karim, saya pasti kah. Dan keluarga aku selamat. Bukan untukku, untuk mereka.
Ayo! Ayo pergi! Ayo! Go. What's the magic word, please? No. Oh. <gasps> Mina! Peter! Peter! Yati? On 
the day of the eruption, the geography of the area would determine who would live and die. At the center of the Sunda Straits, Krakatoa was within 30 miles of land in all directions. The first tsunami produced by the volcano had headed north, where it destroyed Katambang, killing thousands. The steamship Loudoun and the Fourth Point Lighthouse were untouched in the south, as was I in Buitzenborg, 60 miles inland. We were safe for the time being. Sumatra Geological Survey, 1850, Volume 3 and 4, Plyos Principles of Geology, Werner's Classification, Scrope upon extinct volcanoes. Coffee! We'll need some coffee! It's going to be a long night. How could I have been so stupid? The answer's right in front of us. Look. Why didn't I see this at the time? Look at the profiles. Steep here and shallow down into the centre. You see? What does that tell you? A single common source of rock inside the... Inside the caldera, exactly. The caldera, singular. These aren't three different volcanoes. It's one. One volcano. All fed by one reservoir of magma. But that's immense. And I told them they were safe. Excuse me, Twin. Who's this? A girl. I can see that, show. We're busy. Get rid of her. What do you want? The mountain. What about it? It's done this before. In less than an hour, the column of ash was 30 miles high, fanning out in all directions. Soon it would engulf both land and sea. How long will it take to get to the hill farm? On foot. Five hours, maybe more. Soon it will be impossible to breathe here. You must get to higher ground. Come on, children. Chepa, chepa.
It's useless. Governors won't work in this. Sink the ship. This ash keeps falling off the sea. What the hell are you doing? Come on, get up! I want these decks kept clear. Rotating teams working by the stern. You understand? Let one over the side. Sailors that survived the eruption reported a strange glowing. Gases and ash mixed, creating violent electrical discharge. The lightning is dangerous. But ash is a far worse threat. Just a foot of ash is heavy enough to destabilize a ship. At 5 p.m., the Bering family headed towards the hills to the northeast, away from the spreading ash cloud. Joanna recorded the following account. The journey was one I would hope never to go through again. We were unable to take the road and were forced to walk. First up a coastal track and then through a wood with no path. Lisa, I need to rest a bit. Behind us was a continuous terrible roaring, as if the sea was still trying to catch us. Where are we going? Peter, I told you to be your part. I don't remember. Peter, I'm sorry. Come and rest. I should go back and help with the evacuation. The muster relief from Tilok Betong is a battalion for the seventh ability there to deal with the insurgents. It'll take three days. Look around you. If Van Sandik's men stayed, they're already dead. And you will die too if you return. These people, they understand. Go on, Peter. Jump. That's a good boy. Let's go. There are many stories about the mountain, about how the spirit of the mountain broke the land into pieces and sunk into the sea, and how it was reborn out of the sea, and some people say how it will come again to destroy. I've got it. The Javanese Book of Kings. The Staka Rajapura. It is our history. It was only published in Dutch a few years ago. This chap, Rangawa Sita, collected all the folklore. I picked it up in Batavia. I thought it might be interesting. Listen to this. The year 416. At last, with a tremendous roar, the mountain burst into pieces and sunk into the depths of the earth. And the next verse. The water of the sea rose and flooded the land. Pass me the map. If I'm right and history is repeating itself, then an eruption of this magnitude will generate a wave that... It will engulf this entire coastline. May God have mercy on their souls. I had thought that 30 miles of ocean would protect us from Krakatoa. But what we had seen so far was just the beginning. Quiet, please! Quiet! 
Now I need everyone to go below. What? Why on earth should we do that? Because the ass is unbalancing the ship. It's making her top heavy. So what does this mean? I'll tell you what it means. It means that if I can't lower her center of gravity, she'll capsize. No. You mean we are going to be human barracks? Along with the coolies. It's for the good of everyone on board. I won't do it. I won't be packed in there with feasts. I can natural. distribute the weight in one of two ways, sir. Below or overboard. It's your choice. Oh, for God's sake, you're not going to do this, are you? Colin! Get on the hole! Get on the hole! You got me down there. <coughs> Watch your step down there! What are you doing here, miss? What can I do to help? You get below with all the others. I, I don't want to hide. I want to do something. What's your name, miss? Elizabeth. Well, Elizabeth, you can help me by being strong. You understand? Because if you are, they will be. family, your uh, wife and children, where are they? They went into the hills to end with the others. I must miss them very much. Earlier at the, the house, I... I thought I'd never see them again. Eight thirty PM. The Loudon had now been at sea for more than twelve hours. Around it, the ash was sucking moisture from the air.
We reached our hill farm by the late afternoon, and in my heart I thanked God that we'd at last reached safety. But God cannot have been listening, because the worst horror was yet to come. You all know me and know you can trust me. You're under my protection. And by God, I shall do my duty by you. You're my children. There's no need to be frightened. You're safe here. My, um, my family are here with me. And I shall stay with you as I shall stay with them. May God be with us all. That morning, there was no dawn on Krakatoa. Throughout the night, the explosions increased. A series of booms could be heard hundreds of miles away. The volcano was entering a new phase. leave the light. It should have been dawn two hours ago. Go back downstairs. Look to your mother. I want the baby to stop crying. Because Mama doesn't have enough love. You'd be killed. What will that achieve? Don't you understand? This is all my fault. What's your fault? How can this be your fault? I should have known. I could have warned them. I can still warn them. The sea is coming! After 20 hours of constant eruption, the magma chamber of Krakatoa was empty. With nothing to support it, the volcano began to collapse. The resulting blast was so great, it was heard 3,000 miles away in Australia. The loudest noise in recorded history. Millions of tons of ash and pumice poured into the ocean. Triggering a tsunami more destructive 
than anything that had come before. to lock the tongue. The harbor's been destroyed. How is it possible? What exactly does that mean? Quiet! Listen to him. The closer to land, the higher the waves. The sea swept it away. Someone here. Oh, then where are we going? Taking her out to sea. We are all in the greatest danger. We have to face the truth. If it's God's will. What are you just saying? I'm saying I'd gladly give my life to save any one of yours. Shackle outside the horse back. We're anchoring. Why? Cars, Mr. Jensen. If she isn't anchored, we'll be ripped in shore and smashed to pieces. Whoa, oh my it's god. It's fast. Drop the shackles now. Oh, Keep the screw turning. Hey. And full speed. Anchor. Get below, sir. 13 fathoms. Time it to the wheel. Now you get below. No, sir. I'm staying here. The ties up down, Mr. Yanson. Sir.
He's gone. What? Theo! Theo's gone! was more than 40 meters high. It lifted the lighthouse from its base. It destroyed the entire coastline. Towns. Villages. There was nothing they could do. Thousands died. What was unknown to me then was that the volcano had one last terrible secret to reveal. The collapsing volcano had unleashed a final avalanche of scalding ash and pumice. Where it made contact with the water, it rode on a cushion of steam. Ash, gas and pumice, heated to more than 500 degrees centigrade, ripped across the ocean towards the highlands of southern Sumatra.
Without thinking, I walked forward. Had I been in my right mind, I think I would have understood what a dangerous thing it was to do. To leave the vicinity of the farmhouse and plunge into the darkness. I think hell is the only word for what I saw and went through. We couldn't even bury our child. My only thought was, thank God he is at least put out of his agony. The Bearings left their devastated farm hut. Of the 3,000 natives who fled to the highlands, more than a thousand died. They suffered horrific burns from ash and pumice. Elsewhere, it was the tsunami that killed.
Captain Lindemann was awarded the Cross of Gold by the Dutch authorities for his bravery in saving the lives of those on board the Loudoun. His logbook provided an invaluable insight into the eruption of Krakatoa. He captained the Loudoun until his death, just two years later. The eruption destroyed 165 coastal villages and it left more than 36,000 people dead. There were reports of bodies and pumice being washed up on the coast of Africa a year later. The Dutch authorities ordered 250,000 gallons of gasoline to be used in the burning of the bodies. continued working for the Dutch government for the next 13 years before he retired to Holland. Johanna Behring's account of the eruption was reported around the world. She remained with her husband Willem and soon became pregnant again. She named her youngest child after the one she lost in the hillsides of Sumatra. Nothing is known of what happened to Takaya or his family. There are no records.
Roger Verbeek's work on Krakatoa went on to become the foundation of modern volcanology. It provided scientists with a detailed eyewitness account of the entire cycle of an eruption for the first time in history. The eruption had far-reaching effects. 20 million tons of sulfur were released into the atmosphere, causing extraordinary sunsets across the planet and lowering global temperatures well into the 20th century. Of Krakatoa itself, almost nothing remained. 12 square miles of solid rock had disappeared in the space of 48 hours. The volcano had literally blasted itself apart. But in 1927, from 300 meters below the Sunda Straits, it erupted again. As Verbeek predicted in his writings, a new volcano formed, growing at a rate of five meters every year. The Indonesians called this volcano Anak Krakatoa, son of Krakatoa. Today, millions of people live within sight of it. And it's still growing. <laughs>